Hello everyone, it's Greg from Edinburgh Renaissance Fencing Academy here. Today I'm returning to the topic of sword design and classification and I want to explore a very particular question. Were rapiers exclusively civilian swords or could they be used in military contexts as well? Uh, the reason we need to explore this question a little is because certain primary sources give conflicting information about this. Um, for example, uh, there are certain English language period sources, most famously the fencing master George Silver, um, who specifically stated that rapiers were no good for warfare, um, that they were only used in civilian situations. Um, Silver is the most famous person who espoused this view, but there were other English language sources saying the same thing um, in the late 1500s and 1600s as well. On the other hand, we have other sources, particularly Italian sources, like the fencing masters Giacomo di Grassi and Vincentio Saviolo, who said uh, specifically that their arts, which were taught with the rapier, were of particular use to soldiers. Um, so this is really a, a seeming contradiction here. Um, so the first step in trying to analyze this is to move away from the fencing treatises and look at other forms of primary evidence for the, the carrying and use of rapiers, particularly period artwork. Um, luckily, there was a big fashion for military-themed art in the 1500s and especially in the 1600s. So I've put together uh, a little display of, uh, of paintings and drawings uh, so that you can examine the swords which are being carried by soldiers in these situations. Um, most of these images were taken from this book about warfare in the 17th century. Um, before we examine the, the pictures themselves, uh, I just want to give a quick definition. Uh, the word rapier can mean different things to different people. So I'm using a, a very broad idea of what a rapier is. Uh, so for me, uh, a rapier is a single-handed sword with a very long, narrow blade and a complex hilt which allows you to grip it with the, the classic four-finger grip. So with that definition in mind, Take a look at these pictures and then I'll come back at the end of the display and do a bit more analysis. Okay, so um, as you have hopefully noticed from uh, these artworks, um, it was actually quite common for soldiers to carry uh, swords with long narrow blades and complex hilts, um, which match the description or the definition of rapier, to me anyway. Now I'm not saying these were the only swords used in the period. Um, you can definitely find lots of examples of soldiers carrying uh, shorter and maybe broader bladed swords. For example, this next image. However, that's really beside the point. Um, what I'm trying to say is that lots of soldiers did carry rapier type swords into battle. Um, what's going on here? What's the explanation for this? Um, I don't have a simple answer for this, uh, but I think there are several possibilities. Um, first possibility is a, a bit of a cross-cultural clash. Um, it could be that to Northern European nations, such as the English, um, rapiers were for civilian use and other types of swords were for military use. And maybe in Southern European nations, such as the, the Italians and the Spanish, um, rapiers were good for everything. 
that, that could be a possibility, a distinct possibility. Um, the other possibility is uh, maybe um, these swords that we're seeing in the, the military paintings are not technically rapiers because they're military swords. So um, maybe they were fitted with a different style of blade or something, which we can't really tell just from a painting. Um, I'm not sure about that. Um, it, it does lead to another problem. If the swords they're carrying are not rapiers, what are they? Um, we would have to invent some other name for them. And uh, in fact, various uh, museums and collectors and so on have attempted to do this over the years. So you find in the antique trade this term rapier sword used to describe these more uh, militarized rapiers. Um, and in fact, in a book down here, um, this term is sometimes used. So this is a catalogue from an old uh, Dutch exhibition about the arms and armour used during the Eighty Years War between Spain and the Netherlands, um, which spans our period of interest. Um, so yeah, it, it's difficult to categorise these swords. But for me, if it's got a long narrow blade and a complex hilt, it's a rapier. It's, it's that simple. Um, now, it might be the case that different rapiers have slightly different blades fitted for different purposes. And I'm going to show you uh, some extracts from this book, uh, for example, swords, which all have the classic um, rapier style complex hilt with the, the grip for the forefinger um, with quite different blades fitted. So I'll include the, the measurement for the width of the blade uh, at the forte close to the hilt. Um, so take a look at those uh, four examples and you can just see the, the variation in sword. Okay, um, so yeah, it, it seems like rapiers or rapier type swords, whatever we want to call them, were in fact used in military situations. Um, that might be surprising for some people. You might be thinking, hmm, maybe if you hit somebody's uh, body armor with a rapier thrust, it would break the, the tip off the sword. So how, how could these swords be any good in a military environment? The answer is quite simple. Um, you, you try not to hit the armour of the other person with the thrust, you aim for the gaps. And this is clearly shown in the following uh, diagrams, which are taken from uh, Valhausen's book on military tactics. Um, this was a very well-known uh, German publication from the early 17th century. So take a look at these and you'll clearly see thrusts being targeted at gaps in, uh, in steel armour. <clears throat> Okay, um, so this leads to uh, some more questions. Um, what about the, the fencing of the day? Um, what does it have to tell us about this topic? How is it related to, to the military use of swords? Um, the first thing I should say is uh, in the 1600s, in the Italian tradition, um, some of the, the techniques which are shown in the treatises are very clearly intended for unarmoured civilian combat. Uh, and you can find these in lots of books, uh, for example, uh, in Giganti, Salvatore Fabris, Rodolfo Capoferro, um, Alfieri and, and numerous others. Um, just as one example, I'll show you an image from uh, Rodolfo Capoferro's book of 1610. So as you can see, th this move is completely implausible to perform while wearing body armour. So it's clearly intended for civilian combat. Um, so it might be people who learned this style of fencing had to pick and choose the techniques which they could adapt for use on the military battlefield. The, the whole system is definitely not necessarily suited to, to that kind of battlefield environment. Um, however, if we took a look at uh, this next image from Valhausen again, um, we can see uh, an infantry soldier uh, thrusting at an opponent. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, at an opponent with his sword. Uh, 
And uh, this type of attack is actually not that dissimilar from the things that we see in the slightly e uh, earlier generation of, uh, of rapier fencing treatises, for example, Giacomo di Grassi and Vincentio Saviolo. So we'll take a look at this diagram from di Grassi, thrusting uh, as an example. So, um, what am I trying to say? Um, I believe that the earlier styles of, of rapier fencing techniques from Italy were in fact suitable for both military and civilian use, and that it was possible to use some designs of rapier in a military context, and we can see that from the period artwork. Um, however, not all rapier fencing styles were suited to the battlefield and not all rapier weapons were suited to the military battlefield. Um, so to return to the topic of George Silver, it might be the case that in England specifically, there was a fashion for uh, very long, perhaps very elaborate rapiers that were super specialised for civilian combat, for duelling. Um, and I believe that during the 1600s, there was in fact a, a unique style of English rapier which had these characteristics. Um, so I think the answer to the question is really a mix of everything we've talked about. There's a bit of cross-cultural misunderstanding. Um, there's a problem of how do we adequately define a rapier. Uh, and then there's a problem of uh, different techniques being useful for different contexts of use. Um, so there you go, that's, uh, that's my overview of uh, a topic which is actually quite complex. Um, but for me, uh, rapiers can and were used in certain military contexts. Um, and it's my personal belief that uh, de Grassi's style of fencing uh, could be adapted and used in a, in a military situation as well as a civilian one. And I believe that the description within his book um, fits with that because he mentions military conflict as well as civilian conflict within the text of his work. So uh, that's enough for today. Um, as always, I hope you found it an interesting video and it gave you some, uh, some new views on swordsmanship to, to take away and think about. That's all for now. Take care everyone. See you next time. Bye.